then um, just kind of looking at two different scenarios here. Um, obviously, situation one, the blue boat um, is bow back on the red boat and we'll have a hard time living there for a while. Um, red boats, obviously, are really, they're really happy with their positioning right now and would probably do all they can to, to roll this boat and get over the top of them. And the options for the blue boat are really only to, to duck and tack. And so this is a really important skill to have um, for bailing out after a bad start. And it's something that we practice. Um, we do practice, obviously we hope that we don't have bad starts, but <laughs> sometimes it happens. And being able to, to gauge this really well is really important. Um, so, you know, obviously don't hold on to bad lanes um, any longer than you have to. If you're, if you're going slow and the rest of the fleet is going fast, you're just gonna keep losing and losing. So um, this, dip in, this dip and tack is a really important skill. Um, and being able to assess how much you have to sail away in order to complete your tack and then duck um, is a really huge part of this. And obviously if it's windy, you might want to ease your controls um, before you tack or, you know, for our boat, we have to make sure I have the jib sheet in my hand and the controls are maybe a little eased um, so that when we tack, we can duck quite easily. Um, and then just looking at situation two, um, on the right, the blue boat starts quite tight on the hip of this red boat. And as soon as you find yourself in that bow back position or tight on the hip, you have to start looking for, for ways out. Um, but I think the most important thing to note is that you want to be able to tack onto port in either of these situations and sail for a while. The worst is when you get onto port and then you realize like, oh, I have to, I have to tack back because I have an, another poor starter. So making sure you're, before you do execute these maneuvers that you take a look over your shoulder um, and assess like, okay, there's actually another boat who had a, a bad start and I need, I need to either, I'll need to duck them or tack and I, I might wait for them to tack so I can have a better lane on port um, is something you might consider. And so couple, just one other thing to look out there too is boats ducking you to leeward. Um, if people further down the line also had a bad tack and, or bad start, they're bailing out. Um, just remember that while you're tacking, you can't force, I mean, you can't cause them to avoid you while you're tacking right? You have to um, at least, you know, let them duck you and then tack. Um, so not only looking at boats over your shoulder and on your windward hip, but also boats that are tacking out to the leeward is pretty important. Um, and I wanted to add one other point, also a crew communication point. Um, in that moment when you both know it's been a bad start, right? And you're waiting for that moment to tack out. Um, and the skipper's really focused on driving and they'll ask, can we tack? Can we tack? Can we tack? It's really easy to say, no, we can't tack because they're boats to windward, you know? But if the answer is, the answer shouldn't ever be no, we can't tack, you know, because you can dip and tack, right? So we tried to work that into our communication that if we had someone on our hip, it was, okay, can I tack? It'll be a dip, a duck and tack. It'll be a dip and tack, you know, whatever it might be. But just acknowledging that option as opposed to saying no <laughs> helps you not sail forward for as long. And also um, we realize that if we're saying, are they are they hurting us? Are we going slow? You probably already have been going slow, and it's already time to tack five minutes ago. So don't get to that point. You know, um, we've learned so much from looking at the tracker in this exact moment because it's so easy to like get blinders at this point in the race and like only see the boat to windward and the boat to leeward of you, and be fighting, fighting, fighting. But if you look at the tracker, often those packs, the boats that are really close and everyone's jockeying for a lane, they're going like half a knot to a full knot slower than the other boats that are able to put their bow down. And you lose so much distance and you're so caught up in this like tiny little pack that you're racing. So just remember that um, if you're pinching, you, it's not a sustainable mode. You can't do it for very long, but we'll get into more of that later. We have a question here from Jeff. Um, when you tack out, do you have concern about having excessive separation from the leaders? How far do you go, especially if you tacked away from the lifted tack? That's a really good question, Jeff. That's a good question. I would say, um, if, you, if you've tacked away from the lifted tack, um, definitely try to get back on the lifted tack as soon as possible. Um, and we'll touch base on this in a little bit, but you know, sometimes you actually do need to sail in bad air on the lifted tack. If you're in the most pressure on the race course and you're on the lifted tack, but you're, you have to compromise a little bit of a clean lane, that can sometimes be better than um, doing those two tacks um, and just staying in phase. So um, you know, that's always an option. It's not necessarily a pretty one and it definitely doesn't feel good on the helm 
Um, but it's definitely an option. Um, Maggie, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I was going to add that, um, Jeff, I think it also goes back to your pre-start homework and what kind of day you identified it is. Um, if it's really important and you felt strongly about getting to one side or another, you know, so say it's a must go left kind of day and you get flushed off the starting line, then I think it's helpful to say on board, this is a clearing tech, you know, and we're trying to go back as quickly as possible. So the first doable lane that we have back on starboard, we take. Um, whereas on a day that you're not really sure what's happening or it seems like an open race course or there's not obviously pressure on one side or other, then tack and focus on speed and heads up for another indicator to attack. Well, you know, and I think that just get, if stuff is like, we have to go left, we have to go left, that'll be in the back of my mind if that lane isn't going well and I'll, and you just, as the crew, sometimes the skipper gets really focused on driving at, on one, once we've tacked on a port and it helps to just ask like, was this a clearing tack? Is this still a clearing tack? Um, and just identify how many boats are taking your hip. But yeah, I think it, it kind of goes back to what you decided before the start. How badly do you need to get to that side versus like, can you sail on port for a little while, get free and clear and then tack back? Yeah. Um, um, and then he also asked about, do you have concern about having excessive separation from the leaders? Um, and I think like, just kind of, you know, if you tack out and you realize like you're kind of the only one going that way, like definitely play with the numbers a bit more, especially like if you don't, if it's an open race course and you don't really know which which side is favored or you know it's a really stable day like we would say you know stay stay with the numbers so if if we've tacked off and then all of a sudden we're like oh actually like a lot of the fleet is with us right now then we'll maybe keep going if we don't know what's going on but if 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 not then we would tack back and just say like let's let's stick with the numbers here yeah totally